Hello and welcome to this morning meditations that are coming to you from Doncaster Circuit. Uh, my name is Jonathan. This morning I want us to think about divine encounters, divine encounters, people who have met God um, and lived to tell it as it were. And uh, the thoughts that I'm going to direct uh, uh, these meditations are uh, from the book of Genesis, chapter 28. Uh, we read from verses 10 to 17. Genesis 28, 10 to 17. Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and started toward Haran. At sunset, he came to a holy place and camped there. He lay down to sleep, resting his head on a stone. He dreamed that he saw a stairway reaching from the earth to heaven, with angels going up and coming down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and Isaac, he said. I will give to you and to your descendants this land on which you are lying. They will be as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth. They will extend their territory in all directions, and through you and your descendants I will bless all the nations. Remember, I will be with you and protect you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done all that I have promised you. Jacob woke up and said, The Lord is here. He is in this place and I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, What a terrifying place this is. It must be the house of God. It must be the gate that opens into heaven. Thank you. The Lord is here and I did not know it. It must be the gate that leads to heaven. What a terrifying sight. That's a man who encountered God. I think most of us know that Jacob is running away from his brother. His own brother is breathing fire and slaughter uh, in Beersheba. And his mother has told uh, Jacob to take off and go to Haran to his uncle's place. There you find safety and uh, you might even find uh, a wife. So Jacob gets to this place called Luz and uh, he, he stays for the night and as it were heaven opens. Open heaven opens in this desolate place, a strange place. I don't know whether you've been in a descent or at least in the bushes. And in the wilderness, all you hear uh, is wind caressing through the bushes, through the thorns. And there's a strange way in the which wind and uh, thorny trees uh, kind of respond to each other. They whistle, they kind of whistle. This is a strange place that uh, Jacob finds himself in. And as it were, we are told that heaven opens. He has this divine encounter. Many people have encountered God in strange ways. Uh, I can think of another fugitive, fugitive who is running away, Moses. He has killed a man in Egypt and uh, he encounters God in the bush and uh, you can only say I have encountered the great I am because God introduces the God self as I am who I am. So yes, he encounters the great I am who changes his life. You can think of Jeremiah, who gives an excuse that he's only but a child, 
you can think of many other people. Uh, Isaiah could only say, oh, it's me, I'm done. Because my own eyes have seen the Lord. I live among an unclean people. My own self, I'm unclean, yet my eyes yet have lived uh, to, to tell about this divine encounter. Uh, Paul could only say, who are you, Lord? Peter, just like Isaiah, he saw his own unworthiness and said, Lord, uh, please depart, um, depart from me. Uh, don't stay here with me because I'm a sinful man. Let me give one last example, and this is Jesus himself. We are told that immediately after a baptism on River Jordan, the dove descends on Jesus and kind of to mark, us, to, to mark him for God's holy use. And dove descends on him and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He is driven to the wilderness and the wilderness for him is only wild animals, so Mark tells us. There is the tempter, the devil, and then I think there is a lot of starvation. Those are the experiences that Jesus went through. I want us to know one thing, uh, a little thing that is recorded only in the book of Mark, that the angels of God came and they helped him. The angels of God came and helped him. This morning or whatever the time, I want you to know, I want us to know that God will always send for us divine encounters. When we go through the shadow of the valley of death, when the stakes are so high, God will send divine helpers. He sent a divine helper to Jacob when he was at its wit's end. He sent a divine helper for Moses when again he was running away. He sent divine help, helpers to Jesus after 40 days of uh, being tempted by the devil. The last thing, the verse that I want us to put is Psalms, 1, Psalms 16. I like uh, verses 9 and 11, to 11. Psalm 16. And so I am so thankful and in glad, and I feel completely secure because you protect me from the power of death. I have served you faithfully. You will not abandon me to the world of the dead. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. That was the experience of the psalmist. He says that you will not abandon me, you will not abandon my soul to share. That's what other translations say, that God will not abandon us. He says, you will not abandon me to the world of the dead. How can God abandon us when uh, he tells us that he is so much committed to us? that we are special, that uh, we matter, that we are the apple of his eye. As you go about your business today, please remember that you are special and God loves you and that uh, God will not abandon you to, to share, you know, to death, to the world of the dead. God cares for us. It doesn't matter what we go through. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for reminding us that we matter. Thank you for reminding us that you, you never abandon us because you care for us. 
even when we get to our wit's end, when we are at the end of the tether, like Jacob, like Moses, even like Jesus when he was tempted, you always send the angels of God to strengthen us. Amen.